Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Table Rush Talk Show. I'm here with um, Melinda Fouts, PhD, and you just dropped PhD of Jungian psychology. You. Jungian psychology. That's ridiculous. I mean, in a big way. Like, what? How? Do, before we get to that, like, how do you just drop that right away? That's incredible. Um, wow. Well, it's not cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. It's studying the theories and concepts of Carl Jung. Yeah. And he was a contemporary of Freud's, for those of you who don't know who Carl Jung is. Okay. And he split from Freud because Freud said every dream had a sexual component, and Carl Jung said, no, it doesn't. Yeah. And Carl Jung started really looking at the undiscovered self okay. and the unconscious and how, like, dreams give us images. Yeah. So it's code to learn more about yourself. Wow. Yeah. Was this... Well, hold on. Before we get to that, we are at the spring Mind, Body, Soul magazine release party. We're here in the Aspen area. And what's this valley called again? It's... The Roaring Fork Valley. The the Roaring Fork Valley, which is incredibly beautiful. Um, You're a 20-year resident of the area. Awesome. And, And Melinda has... An article in Mind, Body, Soul. Is this the center spread by chance? No, but that's all right. It's, <laughs> it's good. You need to like a double PhD to get the center spread, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we're here, and um, you're uh, executive coaching with a group mindset, with a growth mindset, excuse me, which we're going to talk about. But first, Jungian. Jungian. Jungian psychology PhD is this like out of high school I'm like what's your track for that was it inspired right away or was this accidental along the way oh I did not like what I was doing so after I would take my daughter to daycare okay I would walk two miles down the beach because I lived in Montecito at the time and two miles back yelling at the universe you didn't put me on this earth for nothing. Yeah. And one day, I said, why don't you answer me? Okay. And the interviewer says, because you never shut up and stop talking. <laughs> That's what you got. Oh, my gosh. And it was that day, I said, okay, I get to rant for two miles, and then I'll shut up and start listening now, who would bargain like that, right? Yes, of course. And I bargain. I still get to do my rant because I was all geared up to do my rant. And then I said, okay. When I turned around after two miles, I said, okay, give me my answer. And I got my answer that day. In code. In code. Okay. So I walked down the beach barefoot with my dog in the surf. And on the way back, I started picking up broken shards of glass. Okay. And at the end of my walk, my hands are covered full of broken shards of glass. Okay. And I said to myself, how come I didn't see one piece of glass on the way down? Ooh. And the universe says, think about all the broken, shattered lives that need to be picked up and held. I'm like, oh, this is code. I have no idea what it means. But I asked the right question. (laughs) Yeah. I did get an answer. I just don't know what it means. Okay. And so... I went to this friend of mine, an older gentleman, and I said, help me. He goes, oh, Melinda, it's so obvious. I'm like, not to me. (laughs) And he said, you're supposed to be a psychotherapist. So I was first a psychotherapist. Okay. And he said, you're supposed to go to this Pacifica Graduate Institute, which is just down the street. Santa Monica? No, 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 no. no. Oh. It's in Carpinteria in Santa oh. Barbara. Oh, okay. And that set me on my path. Is that um, the... Who ran that? Stephen Osenstadt, and he still does. Okay. And it's a depth psychology institute. Okay. And... Um, that's what started my journey. Cool. Amazing. And and you got your PhD. 
how many years did you invest of your time and effort into that? If you don't mind me asking. Well, it's a two-year program for your master's. Okay. It's a three-year program for your PhD. In California, you have to do 3,000 hours of an internship before you can sit for the licensing exam. Oh, my gosh. And back in the dark ages, when I did this, you yes. also had to do an oral exam. And only two of us out of 33 passed. And I was one. What? Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So... Executive coaching with a growth mindset. How does this come about? Another sort of existential crisis as you're a psychotherapist, or so about seven years ago? Yeah. Burnout. Burnout. Burnout on the pathology. Yeah. Yeah. And I. Uh, uh, woman, a global CIO of an international organization, came to me and she said, I received a phone call from a colleague. She said, my entire team's afraid of me because I'm harsh. And then in this sweet little voice, she goes, but I don't see myself as harsh. So I worked with her for nine months. <laughs> of course she of blind, course you don't. Blind spots are big. <laughs> yeah. Really, really big. Oh, my God. We all have them. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> oh, my so, gosh. Go on. <laughs> so I discovered what would trigger her to pounce on her team. Oh. So I worked with her, and nine months, we finally conquered this blind spot. Okay. <laughs> we conquered this Cruella de Vil that would just leap out of her at times. Yeah. And... Uh, at the end of our time together, she goes, you should be an executive coach. I have worked with multiple executive coaches, and none of them have helped me like you have. I thought, that's exactly what I need. It's the same skills and tools I've crafted over 20 years. Yeah. And I get to be tough. So my tagline is, coaching with an iron fist and a velvet glove. Oh, I like it. Real quick, where can people find you? So if they're captivated by your stories, such as I am, and they're like, I need to know more, where can they find you? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. My website. Okay. What's your website? Successstartswithyou.net. Successstartswithyou.net. Awesome. And I give a complimentary coaching session. And you give a complimentary coaching session. Because I want to make sure we're a good fit. I love it. So it's almost like you're interviewing the person, making sure that, yeah, open-minded or willing or, like, what are what are you looking for? Like, what's a good fit? And I'm just going to adjust this while you're thinking of that. Across the board, yeah. Misha. Yes. There's common denominators no matter what you come to me with. Okay. And everyone gets in their own way because they have patterns of behavior and they need a new new skills, new techniques. Everyone I coach needs better communication skills across the board. Fact of life. Fact of life. <laughs> you have a blind spot. You need better communication skills. I'm sorry. <laughs> Conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. And the thing, I have an advantage that everyone else doesn't have. Okay. So the people that come to me are so focused on their business yeah. and their work. And I have this overview effect. So I have a different perspective. And I hear all the time, why didn't I think of that? Why couldn't I think of that? All the time. And so I always push my clients to come up with a different answer and I go oh that was a B minus that was an A minus yes. and one client said what does it take to get an A plus out of you Yes. and I said if you can give me a never before thought of answer that's what I can do for them mm. it's fun I love it I love it um, when you're at the top of your game you are in the zone in the flow fully connected in mind, body, and soul, 
that's a quote that we've got right there. Tell me if someone's trying to be more soulful or more connected or more, uh, I don't know if spiritual is the right word, but more uh, aware, like what are some, for any executive out there who's watching this, like what are three tips you'd give? Like, hey, if you're trying to be more mindful, am I, am I asking that question right? Or, yes. Yeah. Like, so first of all, everyone that works with me has to have some kind of mindfulness practice. Yeah. And that can be a 60 second, five minute long slow deep breaths. That is actually a mindfulness practice. Okay. Take 60 seconds to do five of those. If you do them deep. Okay. Okay. So people get reactionary. Yes. Especially under stress. Yes. One of my strengths is emotional intelligence. Okay. And so, like, this woman would get triggered, and then she'd react. Mm. So bringing awareness to the trigger, because we all get triggered. Yeah. You have to allow yourself to feel the feeling. So it's like a match. You get triggered, and it's like, you're hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're holding the match. But her reaction to her team actually burns her, Mm. right? Yeah. So I said, okay, allow yourself to feel the feeling, but blow out the match before you react. So now you're focused on your feeling. Yeah. You're giving yourself some space. Yep. And then that gives you time to choose a different response. response. So one of my tools is become curious. Ask questions. Because then you get out of the amygdala hijack, the emotional part of the brain. Okay. And you stay in the prefrontal cortex, your reasoning, thinking, function part of the brain. So when you ask questions and step into it, well, help me understand something. How come you keep making this same mistake? Are you aware that you're making this same mistake? Because they may not be. So that's a tool, the curiosity tool. Yeah. To help you be less reactionary. Love it. Good. Awesome. And then a third, number three. Um, a third. The whole premise of Carl Jung's theories and concepts is greater self-awareness. Mm. Know thyself is the hardest thing in the world to do. Mm. That's why everyone needs a coach. Yes. Because I see things you can't see about you. Yes. And so being connected with yourself... Being a connected that you're triggered yes. is hard for people. They don't yes. they just react and we yes. slow things yes. way down. Yes. So that they can pause. So I say silence is your friend. Yes. And asking questions keeps you in the power seat. Mm. And it's a whole technique around staying connected to mind, body, and soul where you're aligned, centered, and grounded. In which you can then be more present to the other. That's good. That's good stuff. I think those are good things. Yeah. So breathe deep, slow down, take those five big breaths for that minute. Um, Ask questions, right? Asking questions will keep you out of the emotional part of the brain. I love it. And then number three is... Be aware that you're triggered. Like, know thyself. Like, like, be open to the fact. The way I would, I don't. It's the way I hear it is like, hey, like, open yourself up to the idea that yeah, maybe you're triggered and maybe you need to chill. Yes. Yes. That's a good reframe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're also an amazing skier. This is I can I can tell. We before we started this interview, we started talking about skiing. We were she graciously let me eat to get caught up. So I've been interviewing like mad, but um, you've been skiing all over the place, and um, you're still an avid skier. Oh yeah, most guys can't keep up with me. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and where's your favorite like where's your favorite spot to ski? I enjoy Ajax and Highlands. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this has been a ton of fun. Thank um, you. And Stacy's just... Do you want just... one more glass of wine? 
a wine or margarita or a beer? Here, I'll have a glass of rosé. Rosé, thank you. <laughs> and then... <laughs> None for me. And then I was just going to ask her, we are just about done, so I wanted to know from Melinda, is there anything that you would feel remiss if you didn't get to say it before we end our interview here? My book. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'll Tell let you guys talk about the book. Okay. And then we're going to get a canvas. Yes. Cognitive yes. enlightenment. Um, Gabrielle's here for her. Okay. Cool. It's a busy night for me. <laughs> so a you have a book, ring a three ring circus. So you have a book out. Yes. And it is called Cognitive Enlightenment. Cool. And, and it's it's only eighty pages, but it's really dense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And where can they find it? Amazon. Love it. And what's the top? It's called Cognitive Enlightenment. Yeah. So. In 30 seconds, like what? Give me your best sales pitch on why somebody should should grab your book and quickly, or not quickly, dive into the 80 or so pages. We all let everything outside of ourselves disrupt our inner peace. Yeah. And it's all about ways to uncover and develop a discipline to discipline your mind not to let anyone disrupt your inner peace. And sneak preview, the last chapter is all about my journey, which is kind of fun. Sweet. I love it. Um, Melinda, this has been a ton of fun.